Hey everybody, so those of you, if it's your first time here, my name is Brad Vandwall. I used to run the number one team at the number one REMAX office in the world. Now we have a large coaching program. We come here uh, every single Tuesday and uh, give you some free information, uh, everything from uh, today's time management, I believe, to YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, there's so many different things um, that we're doing. And um, Walter is going to be on here. He's going to be co-hosting it with me and going over it. So Give us a minute while we do this, and I'm going to try to get him on. It's still the same thing, Shane. Yeah, I also can't share my screen, which is more important. They don't need to see my ugly mug, but definitely that I can do. On the slides. I just shared that. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So why don't we why don't we dive into it? I'm going to mute myself, and I'll talk to Shane to see if I can fix this behind the scenes. But I'll right on. It. No worries. We'll go ahead and get this bad boy started. Sounds good, buddy. All right. Welcome. Uh, welcome, everybody, uh, to time management and goal planning. We always call it time management 101, but a big part of this is actually goal planning as well, because if you don't know what you're doing and why you're doing it, it doesn't really help to plan your time out. So we're going to roll through the slides and maybe you get to see my ugly mug later. Maybe you don't, but don't sweat that part. Uh, you'll have everything you need from the slides. We are going to dive right in. Let me change my configuration around a little bit so I can move my slides there we go so this is me in a nutshell for those who don't know me um i'll call it a former top producing agent i don't do near as many transactions these days as i used to uh but i built a great business in virginia before i moved to florida um was very successful there writing a book as we speak for agents to take them from brand new to successful so that'll be out probably within the next month or so me and my good buddy ray are co-authoring a book called the startup agent also a navy veteran former marathon runner, everything fancy you see on the slide. The reason I mentioned Navy veteran and marathon runner is because it's a key component of what we're going to talk about today with time management, setting proper goals, being disciplined in your approach to achieve those goals. Um, those are some other avenues of my life that I've been able to apply this same training. This does not just apply to your real estate business. You can apply this to life in general, um, whatever your goals might be. So if you have questions as we go, just as a, a quick formality, uh, drop those questions in the chat box. There will be a Q&A slide. And what I'll do is I'll go to the chat first and scroll through and answer any questions that somebody might have had as we were going, um, just so that we don't miss those. And then we'll open the floor for additional Q&A as we go. So if you do have questions as we go, please feel free to drop those right into the chat box. All right. First thing we're going to talk about is the overview, of course, you can't do a good PowerPoint slide without telling people what you're going to talk about. So we're going to start with uh, casting a strategic vision. What does that look like? How do we make really big grand plans for our life and our business? Um, how to put that all into perspective and then start planning out actually on your calendar, prioritizing and, and getting pencil to paper, so to speak, so that you can start building the success that you want to have. We'll talk a little bit about technology, how to leverage that to your uh, advantage as we go. And then, like I said, at the end, we'll have a little Q&A session. So if anybody has questions, um, feel free to jump in. All right. So first things first, before you can start planning things out on your calendar, you got to know why in the world you're doing it, right? No, nobody starts dropping things on their calendar that don't mean anything to them. And so the first thing I, I challenge everyone to do, uh, as soon as the call ends, if you have time, but at, at least some point this week, is really pause and give some thought to where you want your life and your business to be big picture, long-term. I, I, I call it casting a strategic vision. Bam, now I got now I got video too. Uh, now we're super fancy. I call it casting a strategic vision. So think at least three to five years out. Um, imagine if the next five years, everything went exactly your way. What does that look like for you in your life, in your business, in your finances, and get really, really detailed with that, right? Where are you at? Who are you with? What are you doing now? How has your life dynamic changed because of the success that your real estate business was able to afford you? Really put some thought into that because what that's going to do for you is it's going to give you a reason to plan out all of the individual day-for-day -day priorities that we're going to talk about, right? It's hard to, to plan those things out if you don't have a really compelling reason to do it. And so what I talk about is, right, we, I use a travel analogy. I'm sitting in sunny Florida wearing my Hawaiian shirts. If I'm going to travel to Alaska for a couple of weeks and take a vacation, I'm not going to dress the same way here as I would if I was in Alaska. So I got to pack based on my destination, not my departure point. And you should really think about your business in that same perspective. So we want to plan off of our ultimate destination, not where we're at now. 
what that will do for you is that will allow you to have the freedom to really think about how successful you can be. And when you plan out your yearly goal, you're going to make a much more robust, much more worthwhile, if you will, yearly goal, because you know you're moving towards a specific destination. If you planned a yearly goal based off what you did last year, right, it's really easy to say, well, last year I did this, and therefore anything better than last year is a win. But that really cheats you out of some wild success by planning off of where you're already at instead of where you want to go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that yearly goal that you based off of a really big, grandiose strategic vision, and we're going to break that down. Now, when you make this yearly goal, a couple points. When you write, write out your yearly goal, read it to yourself, like literally read what your goal is out loud. And if you say to yourself, yeah, that makes sense. I can do that. It's not a big enough goal. You're cheating yourself. Stop doing that. Um, if you read that goal out to yourself and you're like, yeah, I, I think I can make that happen. It's still not a big enough goal, right? Think big picture and make audacious goals, right? Make them worth achieving. If you read out your yearly goal to yourself for the first time and you're like, eh, I don't know. Now you've got something to work with because not only is it going to require you to grind day to day, hour by hour, do the activities that you know you need to do. But even if you miss that goal by a little bit, which I'm going to teach you how to not miss it, but even if you were to miss it, you've still accomplished much, much more that year than what you would have had you planned off some arbitrary number that you did last year. Um, and so that's how we're going to plan out our yearly goals. I'm actually going to walk you through a, a yearly business goal tracker in a minute that will kind of break down what that looks like for you. And, and then we'll continue on with the rest of the presentation so you can kind of put those nuts and bolts together. We're going to break down the yearly goal into simple monthly milestones so that every month you can track your progress. You can look back and say, did I close enough to stay on track for my yearly goal? Am I under contract with enough that it looks like I'm going to close enough in the next year or the next month? What happens here is people that make yearly goals, a lot of times they won't look at it for nine, 10 months. Well, if you set a yearly goal and you don't look at it for nine months and then you wake up one day and you're like, I should check my goal and you realize you're way off base, it's too late to make any corrections and get on track to complete that goal. So the monthly milestone gives you a consistent checkpoint that you can very easily build out in advance. And every month you can give yourself a quick little check and say, am I on track? Did I close enough last month? Am I closing enough next month? Am I going to make my goals? And if you're not on track, it's very easy in month one or month two to fine tune your daily activities to realign with the amount of activity you need to do to hit those monthly goals and therefore hit your yearly goals. So that monthly milestone becomes critical. And again, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to put that together before we move on to the next slide. Then we're going to break the monthly milestones down into individual daily action items where you are deciding for yourself, what types of active prospect am I going to do? What are my priorities for my life and my business? Where do I have the time to execute the things I know I need to execute in order to be successful and accomplish what I want to accomplish? What that does for you is it reverse engineers your success. Reverse engineering is a military term that we use. In, in a combat environment, we never want the enemy to get our weapons, our gear, our communications, because if they have a finished product, they can literally deconstruct that finished product into the individual nuts and bolts. And now they've reverse engineered it. They know exactly how to rebuild more. And we lose our tactical advantage because now the enemy has the same thing we have. This is how you reverse engineer your business success, right? We start with the finished product, that big strategic vision, and we're going to deconstruct this all the way down into the individual daily action items that you need to execute so that you can walk day by day consistently in a disciplined manner towards the success you want to have. So before I keep going with this, I'm actually going to share a Word document, and I want to walk through this because this is kind of the the background mechanics, if you will, and I recommend everyone do this for themselves. Nothing super fancy here, but I'm going to walk through the numbers and then we'll dive back into the PowerPoint. So I give this to every member of my team. It is not anything super fancy. You can absolutely replicate this. Um, the first thing you need to know is what are your local market, market metrics? So how much money do you want to make this year, right? What's your yearly goal based on where you want to move to? What is the average commission in your market, right? That might be 3%. That might be 2.75. If you're in a really expensive market, maybe that's two and a quarter on average. 
you need to know what your average is. And then what's your median sales price? If in your market was the average house selling for, those are the basic components of the math we're going to work here. Super, super basic math. This is nothing complex. You can do it on paper. You can do it with your calculator. So let's assume for a moment, we all want to make a quarter million dollars a year. If you want to make more than that, great. Put more than that. If you want to make less than that, wonderful. Put less than that. I'm using $240,000 because it's easy math. And quite frankly, it's not hard to make a quarter million dollars in GCI and real estate if you put what I'm teaching and what we teach at Double Income Coaching into practice. So desired income, $240,000 in GCI. You're going to add into that number any marketing expenses, any yearly uh, advertising costs that you're doing. If you're running ads in some way, if you're paying for lead gen in some way, if you're paying for lead gen, stop it right now. We teach you how to do this stuff for free. But if you're paying for lead gen, you can add it in. So you know what your total revenue you need to generate is in order to hit that GCI number that you want at the end of the day. So for me, I have zero expenses because I built my whole business without paying for stuff. I recommend you do the same. I'm using zero. So my revenue is simply $240,000. In order to generate $240,000 in GCI, I have to, in my market, I know the average house is roughly $300,000 in my market. So you're going to take $240,000 in GCI divided by $300,000. That tells me I need to do $8 million in volume. So now I know, right, I'm starting to get to a point where I have some annual metrics. If I did $8 million in volume for the year, I should theoretically hit roughly $240,000 in GCI. So again, basic math using the same numbers. If I'm trying to hit 8 million in volume and my average sales price is 300,000, 8 million divided by 300,000 is roughly 2.667 or 26.67. I go ahead and round that up to 27 because I can't do 0.67 transactions in a year. Now I know annually I need to either do 8 million in volume or I need to close 27 average transactions. That's something I can start to work from. Either one of those becomes a very easy annual metric for your goal, right? Volume, closed transactions, either one is a great annual goal. Now, to take this one step further, to make this monthly milestone, we're going to simply divide those annual metrics by 12, and that gives us 2.25 deals per month, All right? So let's just call it two to three deals a month. If you're averaging two to three deals a month, you can at $300,000 average price point, you can theoretically do $240,000 in GCI. Now, again, if the numbers don't make sense to you, if that's not your price point, if that's not your sales point, change it. For example, if you wanted to do $150,000 and the average commission in your market was 2.75 and the average sales price was 500,000, you only have to do 11 deals a year. Well, that's let's call that one deal a month, right? So you can play with those numbers and make make it make sense for your market but it's the exact same math. It's very simple. Now, how do I close one, two, three deals a month? Well, that's what we're going to base our daily activity on. And so what you're going to determine is what active prospecting do I want to do on a consistent and regular basis to generate that business? And I've got just a couple things on the, on the piece of paper here that you can think through, right? You can have great conversations with people. I know a schmuck in a Hawaiian church, the shirt that teaches that. You can door knock neighborhoods. You can do deals from Facebook groups. You can market, uh, you can get with estate planners, CPAs, divorce lawyers, and, and have strategic partnerships where they're sending you business. Uh, you, tons of different ways, right? This is what we do at Double Income Coaching. We teach people how to build their business for free. You simply got to take a couple of these that make sense to you and start putting them on your calendar, line item by line item, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 to 11, I'm going to actively prospect this way, and you will achieve your goal. Now, what I recommend you do also is once you write out that goal, establish some sort of tangible reward for you and your family. If you hit your annual goal, you're going to take the family on a vacation. You're going to buy a new boat. You're going to do something, right? Again, it's it's making the daily grind more worth accomplishing because not only are you going to hit your arbitrary annual goal that you set, but there's a tangible reward for you and your family or your friends at the end of this that makes it far easier to get up in the morning and get after it. All right, so let's jump back to our PowerPoint now that I've walked you through that. So what are we going to do to accomplish what we just walked through? The first thing you're going to do is grab your calendar right now. If it's on your phone, grab your phone. If you've got a day planner, open your day planner. Do this with me on the live call, please. Open up your calendar. Flip your calendar to Sunday evening. I pick Sunday evening because that's usually a very quiet time. If Sunday evening is chaos in your house, use Saturday. 
use Tuesday afternoon if that's your quiet day. But you're going to pick somewhere between dinner time and bedtime. That's usually the quietest point of someone's day, right? The family's off watching TV. You can squirrel away 30 minutes, um, whatever that looks like for you. So for me, every single Sunday, seven, that's that little blue line. Every single Sunday at seven, I have this line item on my calendar. You can pick whatever time works for you. Um, just mark this, this item on your calendar, meeting with yourself or meeting with myself, right? Because it's your calendar. Block it out for 30 minutes. Set it to repeat every single Sunday, 30 minutes in the same times you're going to do this meeting. And then set yourself a simple little reminder. It can be 30 minutes. It can be 15 minutes. It really, it's a matter of how much time do you need to wind down whatever you got going on and then get into a nice, quiet thinking space. Uh, for some, that's quick. For some, you might have a, a few minutes that you need to work with. So that's fine either way. Then before you hit save on the counter item, think about right now, where is a quiet, isolated space that I can think clearly without any distractions? For some people, that might be in the dining room because all the family's in the living room watching TV. For some people, that's literally, I'm going to go sit in my car in the garage for 30 minutes because that's the only sanity I can get with you know, three kids, five dogs, and two cats. That's fine. Wherever it is for you is where it needs to be. Save that to your calendar right now. And if you actually took the action and did that, congratulations, you're already ahead of 80% 80 80 of the other agents who are never going to do this. So congratulations so far. Now, here's what we're going to do on Sunday evening every single week. We're going to prioritize our entire week in advance, and we're going to drop line item by line item. We're going to put things on our calendar that we know we need to accomplish that week in order to be successful. So there's three priorities that I use. This is Walt Key's way to do business. It works for me. If you want to do it differently, by all means, do it differently. For most people, this tends to work very well. Priority number one, before you put anything else on your calendar, I call these the can't miss items. These are things that are important to you and your family, but you do not get to control the timing. So things like doctor's appointments. Uh, there's a family reunion this weekend, and I'm not planning it, so I don't get to pick the time. And I'd be a real schmuck if I didn't show up. Um, the kiddo has to get their braces removed, right? Whatever that looks like in your life. These are, these are life dynamics, right? We always talk about work-life balance, and it's this arbitrary thing that nobody can really define. This is it. Your life is more important than your business. And if you put your life priorities together, your business priorities will always get accomplished as well. It's funny how that works. So life happens first. So again, things that are important to you and the family that you do not get to control the timing of, Drop those on your calendar for the week first. Once those items are on your calendar, you're going to move on to priority number two, which is the must-do items. These are the things that you've decided, I have to do these on a regular, consistent basis in order to accomplish my goals. So some of them are no-brainer, right? We know that we have to be actively prospecting. You just need to decide which strategies that we teach are you going to put into practice? Are you going to actively prospect Facebook groups three times a week to generate clients? Are you going to be calling estate planners and CPAs to build partnerships? Are you going to cold call geo leads and expired listings to do business? Totally up to you. Find the strategies that best align with your own personality type and feel right to you. Get that training from us and then execute on the knowledge you get. 80% of agents are not going to execute on the knowledge they acquire you can be the 20% that actually succeeds in this business. So follow up, relationship building, all of those things that you know are part of your business, right? Listing appointments, buyer consultations. These are the priority number two items. You have to be doing these in order to grow your business. Now, there will be things that have to flex. For example, if I list on my calendar Monday and Wednesday, Friday from nine to noon, I'm actively prospecting. And on Tuesday, a brand new client calls me. They're only in town for one day, and it's got to be Wednesday morning. I'm probably going to pause my prospecting that day, show that client the properties, because getting a, a client under contract is kind of part of the business. And then I will find a place to reattack that prospecting so I don't lose traction in my business. But you will occasionally have to flex. Most of it you won't, but sometimes you will. Last but not least, after you've got all of your business building activity laid out, Put all of the other things that are important to you that you want to do that week, put them on your calendar. I'll use a quick example here. If I want to take my wife out to dinner from, on Friday evening, I will actually put on my calendar dinner Friday 6 to 8. Now, 
I'm not going to forget that I want to take my wife to dinner. That's not the point of putting it on the calendar. The reason I put it on the calendar on fr for Friday in advance is let's say, again, arbitrary example, Tuesday, I get a brand new client and they're coming into town from out of town. They're going to be here over the weekend. They want to start looking at houses on Friday. And they're like, Walt, can we start looking at houses at five o'clock on Friday? If I haven't already booked that on my calendar that I'm taking my wife to dinner and I look at my calendar right there on the spot, it's empty. So I'm going to say, yeah, sure. That sounds great. Five o'clock. Well, later I'm going to remember, oh, crap. I'm supposed to be taking the wife to dinner. Now I either have to cancel on my wife. <laughs> that ain't happening. That's a bad business decision right there. Or I have to call this brand new client back, explain to them that I mismanaged my time. I can't actually do the time they wanted and let's reschedule. That's a waste of time. That's a bad first impression. That's not a good way to do business. Had I had that calendar item on my calendar already, I simply say Friday at five. Hold on one second and let me check my calendar. I'm sorry, but I cannot do Friday at five. I already have an appointment. Can we do Saturday morning at 9 a.m.? Wonderful. I'll put it on my calendar right now. I just saved myself the time and headache of having to reschedule. I saved myself the stress of overbooking myself. And I saved a quality first impression for a brand new client because I don't look like a knucklehead that can't manage his own calendar. So even if it's not business related, if there's something you want to do, put it on your calendar simply so that time does not get stepped on throughout the week when you're not actively thinking about it and things are moving around you. Hopefully that makes sense, everybody. If you got any questions, drop it in the chat. We're going to keep chugging along here. Before we move on to the nuts and bolts, let me just touch on this briefly. Leverage technology to your advantage. If you're still using a paper day planner, I highly recommend you figure out a way to start putting into your processes, Google Calendar, iPhone Calendar, Calendly app, some kind of technology for your calendar. So it automates the follow-up for you. It helps you book things more efficiently and you won't forget, let's say you're wandering around, you're grocery shopping, you don't have your calendar out, you don't have your day planner out and someone calls you. If the calendar's right here on your phone, it's super, super easy. So I highly recommend you use technology. Automate your follow-up processes, whether that's a weekly newsletter, that's going to be a text campaign. You need to be maintaining contact with your database in a consistent basis to stay top of mind so they do do business with you. Um, you can use technology to leverage your follow-up and it automates the process, buys you more time to build your business. Uh, think about what we're doing right now. We're sitting on a Zoom call from all over the world, Canada, United States, Mexico, you name it. Why can't you have a Zoom call with your brand new buyer client? as opposed to driving 35 minutes to their place or to the coffee shop or wherever you're meeting, have an hour conversation, drive 35 minutes back and then send them some paperwork to sign. I can have the same conversation. I can convey the same information. I can address all the same concerns through Zoom and then immediately send them the documents to sign. I just saved myself gas money, 70 minutes, that I can put back into my business. Now, if you're having three, four buyer consultations a week, which you should be if you're doing the strategies we teach you to build your business, 70 minutes at a pop times three times a week, that's hours that you gain back to build and grow your business. Leverage technology to your advantage so you get that time back. It's a, it's a wild little, little system here. That we're, we're, this is not 1950. We're not using fax machines anymore. Use technology to your advantage. All right, so let's break down the nuts and bolts of what this looks like. We already identified our priorities, right? Number one, number two, number three. You're going to do this every Sunday evening for the week. When I say budget your time accordingly, uh, that's a snapshot of one of my Wednesday calendars. And just so that you know, that's not some fictitious thing that I made up. Uh, I'll show you my calendar today. Um, this is my Tuesday today, right? This is actually what I'm telling you is how I build my calendar out. I don't know a single successful person that doesn't have a well-managed calendar. All of the bullet points on this slide are not Walt Key's opinion. They are based on actual scientific studies where doctors have analyzed the human brain to determine how best to do things. So when you try to do this, do it in a certain manner. It'll make you more efficient, less stress. Don't block anything on your calendar less than a 30-minute window. The reason being, scientists have found this out. Uh, it takes several minutes for the brain to fully transition from one primary task to the other. 
So if you're popping a bunch of little 10 and 15 minute line items on your calendar, you're not doing anything really focused and you'll, you will anatomically feel like you're jumping from thing to thing and you'll end your day incredibly stressed because their mind is constantly jumping back and forth and it never gets a chance to focus. Not only will you feel stressed, but you'll be less productive because you won't actually be focused on any one of the things you're doing. Um, you'll be three times more prone to errors and up to 40% less efficient if you try to multitask. Again, scientific fact. We've studied this over and over. Um, the bottom of the bullet there about the eight-year-old IQ, they actually did a study of, of males doing one primary task at a time. And then they measured their IQ immediately after trying to multitask those same primary tasks they just did. And their IQ dropped to that of an eight-year-old child when they tried to multitask. It just doesn't work. You cannot do more than one thing more efficiently than you can do your number one priority. That's why we have priorities. If it's your number one priority on the calendar at that time, everything else can wait. So 30 minute blocks. If you've got something you think will take 45 or 50 minutes, book it for an hour. If you've got a big block of time and you think it'll take you 75, 80 minutes, book it for 90 minutes. That will ensure that you're never running around frantic and stressed. It'll ensure that you never overbook yourself and it will give your brain time to fully adjust and prepare for the next activity. You will feel like you get a 27 hour day when you do this, because you will be far more productive with the time you have and far less stress with the activity that you're doing. Any questions about that, drop it in there. A couple questions that usually come up on this slide is if I'm booking out my day solid like this, when am I following up with my clients? When am I you know, answering phone calls, et cetera? You'll notice if you look at 7 a.m., noon, and six, I do this every single day of the week. I have built in follow-up time in my calendar so that I never drop the ball on my clients. Now, here's the rule of thumb. Again, Walt Key's opinion, you can argue with me. That means scientifically you're wrong, but you're welcome to do it. <laughs> That's a joke, laugh. Um, it is not okay to ignore your clients for two to three days. That is absolutely not okay. That's unprofessional. That's bad communication. However, it is perfectly fine to get back to your clients within a two or three hour window. Perfectly fine. You are not an on-demand item, right? Your clients do not have 24-7, 365 unfeathered access to you. No professional manages their business that way. If you don't believe me, when we get off this call, go call your doctor's office. And when the receptionist answers the phone, say, hey, this is Walt. I want to talk to Dr. Smith. I'll be there in an hour. And when the receptionist is done laughing at you, she's going to tell you when Dr. Smith is available and you are going to gladly pick from the time that is available. That is how professionals manage their calendar. You do not have to be available 24-7, 365. But build in some dedicated follow-up time so that you don't ever drop the ball on your clients. You'll always have that time to get back to them. Now, if there's a gap between activities, absolutely, you can jump in and do some stuff there. But build in some dedicated follow-up just to make sure that you're doing it well, because communication, of course, is a huge part of our business.